Okay, Sunday, 11th of June, Reef at Oasis Koi Farm, the great big Koi sale weekend. We had a fantastic day yesterday. It was absolutely um, amazing to see so many people down here. We had an awful lot of fun uh, in the pond just over there over the back. Uh, I'm just in the process of jet washing this one down now. Uh, and then we're actually gonna switch you over and show you exactly how we're gonna be building this. So let me snap back to you in a second. Once this one's been jet washed off, I'll show you some of the fish inside. Let's go. Very responsible on my boys Koi. A uh, nicely uh, jet washed off um, pond bass, and that these are 35,000 litres. Um, as I mentioned before, what we're going to be doing is swapping this out. So let me spin you around and show you exactly uh, what I'm going to be doing there. So, John Boy's just about to crack off the four inch rubber T on there, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to fit a T piece uh, a rubber T uh, just after that. Um, and then I am in the market for a sieve, um, so I'm going to get a sieve ordered or uh, we'll see if I can find a nice cheapie on uh, Facebook Marketplace or eBay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go from a sieve, um, so in turn we don't actually have to run uh, any brushes or anything like that in here. Uh, RS2000 is actually having the Nexus from me, um, so all that's good to go. What we're going to do now is literally just take the hose off the jet wash uh, and then we're going to feed the hose down into the bottom of the bottom drain because bear in mind all this has been siphoned out so i will actually show you how much gunk actually sits within uh, the bottom drains because if you ask me you don't see enough people online talking about needing to purge off bottom drains and stuff like that obviously a hell of a lot of your bacteria is going to sit within your bottom drain it doesn't matter whether you've got four inch or three inch you're always going to get that little sediment slip that sits on there we purge our bottom drains daily at the minute we have been trying to purge uh, into the nexus on here um, but we're not actually going to be purging into the nexus anymore we're actually going to be putting this onto a t-piece so we can actually go ahead and purge it off properly so let me take the hose off of there um, finish my uh, cup of coffee um, and then yeah I'll show you the bottom there for how much uh, gunk actually comes out let's go so John's just going around there now to feed the hose through so we've actually got enough length to be able to sand it down but as you can see this here is looking relatively clear at the moment in the bottom. Yeah, we've still got to move it off around the edge and stuff like that. Uh, and then we're actually going to let this bait dry before we go ahead and fill it. Even after we fill it, we're then going to fill it full of chloramine tea just to eradicate any problems on there. So this here, at the moment, as you can see, is nice and clear. Wait till you see the gunk that you see running out the bottom of here. Just feed it now nice and slow for me, John boy. Yeah. See it all coming out now. literally full of debris and detritus. Now, when we were draining this off, we actually purged it all off into the bottom drain, uh, sorry, into the nexus, and there's still a hell of a lot of poop in there. Uh, can you turn the Uber on for me, mate? Uh, headphone warning for people. Let that keep running, look at all that still coming out of there. And this gets purged on a daily basis. Now, granted, don't get me wrong, this has sat for two weeks with the water quite low because we've not needed it. I mean, look at the crud coming out of that. It is absolutely insane. We will keep doing this until it eventually runs clear. And there's not a single morsel of the trousers that's coming out. As you can see, it's getting better. Well, let me snap back in a second once I've got this nice and clear. Let's go. Okay, so if you look now, that is back to being nice and gin clear. Absolutely zero in that. You've got to be purging your bottom drains. If it is that you've not got a purge line on at the moment on your, fil on your, on your filter line, uh, sorry, on your bottom drain line, then I definitely, definitely advise re-looking at it and seeing if you can fit one ad hoc. I know it may mean um, draining your pond uh, to do it, but believe you me, especially in the summer months when you guys at home like me are feeding very, very heavy, then you've definitely got to be purging your bottom drain at least once every sort of two or three days. Um, it would blow your mind the amount of poop and detritus that will get caught up within that bottom drain. It's absolutely insane. Uh, this is why we're doing these little sort of like information snippets within the video uh, of our sort of top tips of what we would recommend to you guys i mean you've only got to look at sort of why we can stock the densities that we do um 
and aren't getting problems and stuff like that, it's because of how often we're doing filter cleans, filter cleans how often we're adding in uh, probiotics, um, whether that's a probiotic koi food, whether that's a probiotic, i.e. Um, which one's it called now? Uh, lactolate, uh, whether it's PSB, whether it's filter side gel, all those are probiotics. Um, you need to be dosing and feeding your filters regularly, especially when you're feeding high volumes of food. Uh, and as you call your packing on size, obviously your filter needs are going to need to increase as well, as well as your filter regimes and your filter clean regimes are going to need to increase as well. So that's our top tip at the start of this video. And let me spin you around uh, and show you exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, on the filter just behind me. I know we spoke about it a moment ago, but we're going to go ahead and move the Nexus out of the way. Uh, and then I'll show you the tank connectors that we're going to go ahead and put on as well. Let's go. Okay, so here are two of the IBCs. Uh, I'm going to use the black one just because it's got the uh, bigger valve on the back of it. Uh, what's it actually doesn't really matter which one I use. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decommission um, my Nexus off here. Now I do have one, two, three for five nexuses one of them has already gone i've got four nexuses up for sale all i want for them is what i paid for them which is 450. Uh, they come absolutely ram packed with 350 liters of k1 in the outer and 80 liters of k1 in the inner now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to fit i'm going to pull this out and i'm going to fit my ibc facing this way so when i've actually got my purge on the bottom of the settlement chamber which is what we're going to call this from now on i've got a purge line there in the bottom of my settlement chamber which will in turn will remove all of that poop and crap in the bottom of that um, i then need to bore hole in uh, a 110 mil uh, tank connector um one into here then one as an exit and one as a entrance into here as well because this is what we're going to do our giant uh, multi-bay out of so let me rip this down get it out of the way uh, and then snap back in a second once i've got this in and i'm figuring out my head heights and stuff like that let's go okay so that is fat raft's nexus that he's bought uh, moved out the way uh, what I'm going to do now is I've just realised that uh, this IBC actually already has a float level in there. Um, so I'm actually going to repurpose this. I've got to cut the top off now. So what I've done is I've just got my hex piece in here so I can actually go ahead and take those out. I should have said headphone warning really first, shouldn't I? Uh, but we'll take these top bits out now because then I want to actually angle grind off the top of this IBC. Okay, that's that side off. Coming back round to the other side. Now this settlement chamber, hang on. This settlement chamber is actually gonna have uh, brushes, etc., etc., inside of it. Eventually, once we've earned some more bennies, I will actually go ahead and swap these out for sieves. Oh, big sieves or we might actually can turn one of these into a giant sieve and i a video from winter um so now i've got these off let me go ahead and get my angle grinder so i can now actually go ahead and literally angle grind out uh, the top of here i don't want to get too close to the edge because i want a lot of this to be actually sort of remain intact top tip when cutting through these watch out for the modern plastic let me cut this and i'll snap back in a sec so i'm very glad i cut that off camera it's got plastic bones on over my finger and there's a lot of swearing coming out. <clears throat> Let me spin you around though and show you what I've done. Okay, so that is the inside top coming out. And this is what I mean about the float level uh, that is actually inside. So when this is full like that, um, then the holes won't actually engage and start filling. So we can actually set this up on uh, an auto top up. Very, very simple. Uh, if it is, you want to set one of these up at home. Uh, this is basically what you'll find in the back of your toilet. Uh, so when it's full, it puts a blanking cap in that. When it's empty, it actually allows it to fill up. Um, we have also got a, an additional um, fill on the bottom there but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a tap uh, on the end of there to tell for darren drop me off just so i can actually blank that one off uh, but yes that is the inside gubbins uh, one thing with ibc's is you always want to make sure that they've only actually um shipped food grade products in so this one had um vegetable oil in uh this one here had uh oh, what was it uh, pva glue 
uh, PVA go in there. Um, so yeah, that's fine. We'll uh, give this one a good jet wash out later on. Uh, and obviously we will give this uh, a fill and a drain before we actually go ahead and take it off. But that's the beauty about having this as a settlement chamber. You've already got your drain off bung in there. And obviously you've got your, uh, you've got your handle there to be able to open it up and actually go ahead and uh, close it back down. So let me drag this into position over there and then we can figure out our heights and stuff like that. Let's go. Okay, so 110, well, actually 117 mil hole bored out <coughs> into the bottom where I had to angle grind this piece off that was in there just so I can get enough uh, onto here. And the piece that I mentioned that had the, uh, the extra tap in that Telford Darren gave me the bit for, I've had to take it out of there. Now what we need to do is go ahead uh, and actually place this on there now so we can go go right ahead and actually begin to uh to screw this on so that's the outside face that we're going to go and i've also got some cc1 to be able to glue that on so we go ahead and take these out now and offer that up against there and see how we're looking let's go okay so you will notice that i've uh pre-drilled out all of my holes so all i've done is i've put the outer ring on the front <clears throat> and then gone ahead uh and just literally gunked around where all the holes are going to be and then put lines in between to make sort of like a flange seal, a uh, gasket seal, should I say. Done exactly the same one here as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on the front uh, and then place one screw in and snap back to and show you that in a moment. Very hard to record on my own, but that's got the uh, the CT1 there on the back of it now. So it's just a matter of roughly sort of lining that up and giving it a gentle push just to get it to sort of stay roughly over those holes there where I want it to be and then fit in there. Let's go. Okay, so that's the OBC sealed on the outside and that is the OBC sealed on the inside. What I need to do now is just jump on through and just literally make that seal all the way around there nice and flush. I need to put a 110mm piece in here, then a 90 because what I want to do is bring it up so as the water comes in, all the detritus and gunk We'll actually go ahead and sit on the bottom. Uh, I need to get a T-piece in here. Uh, the reason why I need to actually go ahead and get a T-piece in here uh, is so I can actually fit a valve here, a Valterra and a valve here. So I've actually got the purge line in. Let's go ahead now and uh, fit this one. Let's go. Okay, so whilst that's dried there, I've got ahead and I have cut through both of where my holes are going to be for the uh, the exit from this bay here uh, over into this bay here. Uh, I've also gone ahead, took all my screws out and I've just prepped up my surfaces on here. Uh, I've not prepped these yet because I actually need to go ahead and re-pilot hole my uh, holes through first before I actually go ahead uh, and glue that just to make it a darn sight easier for myself. Um, so let me snap back to the second once I've got this in. Let's go. Okay, so I've glued up this bottom panel again. Uh, re glued in all this here, so I'm just waiting for that to dry now. Uh, same as this one on here, and same as that one on there. So, I'm just going to go ahead now and get my T piece um, so I can actually go ahead and fit that in there, um, and then we are good to go. So, we'll get a rubber T on there um, and then get that built and all in situ. So, snap back to in a sec. Once I've managed to do that, well, actually, I'll tell you what, in the meantime, we've had a little delivery, so we'll get that unboxed now. Uh, so yeah, snap back in a sec. Okay, so I think, yeah, this is my delivery from uh, SKS. So let me just move the packaging bits out. So we've got some Aqua Flavin. We've got some Defoma. We've got a new thermometer. We've got some Alperex, because we've been running out. Uh, we've got some Sedate, some anti-back spray, some top coat sealer. I do believe that is Sedate, no rope or wound cleaner. Some RC protective powder. Uh, Lernex Pro. Some more Alperex. We've got a hell of a lot of deliveries coming in, so we're gonna make sure that we are stocked up on our meds and stuff. 
uh, our Lernex Pro. We did order some auto feeders, but it doesn't look like they have come. Uh, glass cover slips for our micro slides and stuff. Surgery kit. I lost my last one, and we've got some of the Trans Instruments Coil Medic salt pens as well. What else have we got? Some more glass cover slips for the microscope. And one more bottle of Lernex Pro. So I need to chase up to see where my other bits are, because uh, they haven't arrived. So yeah, that's our delivery. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's get this bad boy plugged in, and we'll find out what the temperatures are. Let's go. Okay, so slight change of plan. I've got two of these. So I kind of figured, we're always professing the difference between K1, um, Jack Martin, etc., etc. So we're just kind of figure, well, why don't we run a side-by-side -side comparison? Swap the filtration over here for another one of these with a settlement chamber. <coughs> run this one, Jack Martin. Run this one, K1. So let me spin you around and show you the pipe work. So all the pipe works now in situ with our purge off drain. We've got a, a four inch Valterra in there uh, and we're just going ahead now and just literally filling this up. Um, we're going to turn this here into a joint moving bed. I'm going to show you how I'm actually going to build it. So no K1 can actually come down here and no K1 can actually go up through the pump. But for the time being, what I'm doing is I'm just recycling some of the K1 that I've got out of this Nexus here, but because it's been sat around, I'm actually dropping it in. So I've got 40 litres of K1 goes in here every time. So I've got 350 litres in here and I've got another 350 litres out the back. So you're gonna have 700 litres of K1 in here to start with. And then we're gonna continuously keep adding K1 to it over the next couple of weeks. I was gonna leave this soaking now for around sort of two, three hours. Uh, I've got a hell of a lot of PP in there. And I mean a hell of a lot of PP. This will also act as sort of stripping off any of the plastic that's on there. Uh, the plastic coating that's on any, on any of the new K1. So let me go ahead and keep hoovering out of here and dropping it in there. And then I'll show you me dropping everything into there and then eventually turning this into a brush fit a little bit later on. Because in about a week's time, we've got a import landed in there. Let's go. Okay, so this is now beginning to fill up. And I've gone ahead and PP soaked the K1. And then I'm just actually going ahead and PP soaking this now as it's filling up. Like I said, I've got a huge amount of uh, potassium permanganate in there just to make sure we're absolutely eradicating anything that could possibly uh, be in there. So just waiting for this to sort of fill on up now. But let me spin you around. So you can already see where some of the algae that's formed on the bottom of the pond has already started to come through and actually begin to settle there on the bottom chamber. Now, what we're actually able to do now is obviously close that valve area down, uh, then actually begin to sort of open this valve here to actually remove um, all of that sort of algae there that's sat on the floor. Um, this here is obviously filling up slowly now. Obviously I've got a lot of PP in there just to make sure it's soaking off. And then once it's done, I will then go ahead and neutralize it with uh, hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna go ahead and fish a, fit a mesh guard over there now to actually stop the K1 from sort of returning down there. So we go ahead and do that and I'll snap back to you in a second. Okay, so to stop the K1 coming through, uh, I've just fitted this mesh grid system uh, up over the top. Um, so that will go absolutely nowhere. Uh, and then because we go in pump return, uh, I'm actually going to stick a pump in this end here. Uh, and then I'm going to go right ahead, uh, chase my pipe work back down here, fit my UV bulb that is just down there, and then return it into the uh, main uh, pond here. But I'm just waiting for the last sort of... Uh, six seven inches just to fill up in this back one at the moment but you can already see how fantastically well the settlement chamber is working obviously there's no brushes in there at the moment or anything like that so yeah it's working an absolute treat but that's it for this video um make sure you are subscribed along to follow along how this is actually how this build is actually working uh especially with the likes of uh uv being installed and stuff like that and obviously the new import that we've got landing going in there too uh, thank you very much for watching. It's Father's Day on Sunday, so keep your eyes peeled on the website for some epic, epic deals. Uh, but other than that, stay safe, stay sane. Most importantly, people stay happy. Balding Reefer, out.